Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for SAT. We have been solving SAT math problems out of this book here, the SAT Official Study Guide 2020. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Make sure you buy 2020 edition. Today we will solve some problems that you will find on page number 476. Turn to it. Page 476. Always make sure that the book is in front of you. The very first problem that you see on the page number 23, as you can see, is already, is already on the blackboard. So what is going on in this problem here, in this question, is that uh, there was apparently a news show, a cable news show, and at the end of the show, the host invited the listener or the uh, uh, people who watch the show to to take take a part in a poll and the question was asked are you in favor of this new government policy and people called in 28 percent says yes they were in the favor of the new government policy 70 percent said that they, that they were opposed to it the question simply is why are these results unlikely to represent the sentiments of the population as a whole why do why do this why can't why can't we make a claim that the results that we that obtain in this poll represent the view of the entire population of the, of the country and the answer is very straightforward because here we have what is known as a self selection bias we have a self selection bias which simply means that those who responded to the poll do not represent a random sample they do not represent a random sample those who called in those who called in is not a random sample there's a self selection thing going on there and that's all there is there's nothing to do here all the other answer choices that you see there they are they were nonsensical one says that because 50% did not say yes and 50% did not say no, that's just silly. The other one, it just goes on, one, one, one silly thing after another. Another one says because the results do not add up to 100, no. The answer is B. Let's, let's look at number 24. 24 we have a function f of x, we are told that it is equal to 5x squared minus 3. And then we are also told that f of x plus a equals 5x squared plus 30x plus 42 and the question simply is what is the value of a? a is the constant here and what is a equal to? let's find out shall we? so we know f of x equals this and we also know that f of x x of a equals that but this is the function here which means if we were to substitute this value x plus a here x plus x plus a f of x plus a here it should, it should represent a quantity which is 5 times x plus a whole squared minus 3. Makes sense. Let's work on that, shall we? Let's open this up. So that's going to be equal to 5 times, let's open this part up, x squared plus 2ax plus a squared minus 3. Let's open it up even further. So we get this is x here, 5 times x squared plus 10 times ax plus 5a squared minus 3 and that quantity right here is f of x of f of x plus a which is the same thing as that which means these these two quantities should equal to each other makes logical sense because that is f of x plus a and so is this one well, the very first thing we notice is that we have 5x squared here, we have 5x squared here, we can, we, can just, we, can, we can just subtract the two quantities from each side and we are done with that. What we are interested in is this part, how do we figure out A? And that is going to come from here. Because, because of the fact that these two quantities are equal, these two equations are equal, which means the coefficient of each of these, coefficient of x here and coefficient of x here, they have to equal to each other. Ten, which means 10A must equal 30. There you go. If 10a equals 30, if 10a, if 10a equals 30, 
there you go a must equal 3 and if we wanted to if we actually wanted to we could actually very quickly verify it which is this part right here the constant here is 42 and the constant here is 5a squared minus 3 these two quantities must equal each other also let's do it on the top here so 5a squared 5a squared minus 3 must equal 42 which means 5a squared must equal 45 which it does 5 times a squared we're claiming a to be 3 3 times 3 is 9 5 9 is a 45 it does it does check out a is equal to 3 that was number 24 let's move on to 25 let's move on to number 25 Number 25 on the next page says that sine of sine of x degrees sine of x degree equals a. Question is which of the following must be true? Question is which of the following must be true for all values of x? So the important word here is must. Which is why I underscored it. We'll get to that in a second. Which is why I underscored the word, which of which the following must be true. Whenever they use the word must, which means that of the four answer choices that they give us, more than one answer choice is or might be of the nature where it may or may not be true. It may be true in some cases and in some instances, but we're looking for something that has to be true all the time. So we have to be careful. Let's look at the first one. Answer choice A. Answer choice A says cosine of x x degree is A. Before we before we figure out whether or not this is something that must be true, let's put this thing in the form of a triangle so it makes it easier for us to analyze it. Sine of x, so let's draw a triangle here. I'm just going to call this x degrees. Let's call this A, B, C, so it makes it easier. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. There you go. In this case, opposite over hypotenuse. In this case, sine of x degree would be opposite, which is a, over hypotenuse, which is 1, because this is the right angle, and that equals 1. Is this something that must be true all the time? The answer is no. Cosine of x degree will only equal a, cosine of x degree, which is adjusted over hypotenuse, will only equal a if these two sides happen to be equal. This is, this is true, true, only if only if AB equals AC. Otherwise, no. It is not something that has to be true all the time. Let's look at answer choice B. Answer choice B says, answer choice B says sine of 90 minus, sine of 90 minus x degree equals A. Let's take a look at what that is. So, let's erase this part that we had before, that we had inserted. It is not given to us. That is A, obviously. Sine of 90 minus x. Let's first locate. Let's first locate the angle 90 minus x. This is 90 degrees. This is x degrees. So this is 90 minus x. This is 90 minus x degree. And sine of that angle, sine sine of that thing would be opposite over adjacent. Sine is opposite over 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 hypotenuse. I mean to say, opposite over hypotenuse. Again, this would only be true. This quantity will only be true if this thing is equal to that side. Only in that case, sine of 90 minus a, 90 minus a opposite over hypotenuse, only in this case it will equal a. Same reason, true only if a, a b equals a c. But if it turns out that this triangle is not an isosceles triangle, then the quantity, then the answer choice a and b will not be true. So the answer is a and b may be true, but not necessarily to only if they are only if it turns out to be isosceles. Let's look at answer choice C. Answer choice C says cosine cosine of 90 minus x degree. So let's erase this part part that we had introduced. Now let's let's take a look at it again. Cosine of 90 minus x, 90 minus x is already here from last time. 90 minus x cosine of that angle, co cosine of that angle would be adjacent, 
Over hypotenuse. There you go. Cos, it turns out that the cosine of 90 minus 90 minus x is exactly the same as sine of x degrees. Cosine of 90 minus x is a over a uh, over 1, just like this guy. So that is true. Unsaturized d is just unsaturized d. We're not going to go into it. Unsaturized d is just plain stupid. Because what we are doing there is we're trying to find the sine of x squared degree. For example, if x turns out to be 60, then here we're looking at sine of 6, 60 times 60, 3600 degrees. Or if x happens to be 30, we're looking at sine of 900. It's just plain stupid. The answer is C. Twenty-six. Twenty-six says that we have we have this quadratic equation. Let me just read exactly how it says. It says the quadratic function above models the height of certain things that is thrown in the air. A projectile, they call it, and it this 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 equation is going to give us the path of that projectile, whatever it is that we're going to throw in the air. It's going to go up in the air. It's going to reach a maximum height, and once it reaches the maximum height, if it's going to fall to the ground, and the path is going to look something like this, an upside down parabola. The question is, in this quadratic equation above, which gives us the height of the projectile, uh, what is the interpretation? or positive x-intercept. What is the interpretation of his positive x-intercept? So, for example, we're just going to draw here x-axis and y-axis, just anywhere, doesn't matter. So here's our x-axis, and here's our y-axis, let's say. Here's our y-axis, and we're going to have two intercepts here, because it's a quadratic equation, we're going to have two solutions, because it's not a perfect square. One is right here, which is a negative intercept, and one is right here, which is positive intercept. The negative intercept is it, it has no real life interpretation. The question is, what is the real life interpretation of this x intercept right here? But that answer is very straightforward because we're looking at x intercept, which is what this is. X intercept is where it cuts the x axis. Where it cuts the x axis, the y has to be zero, obviously, which is why it's called x intercept, which means the height, height is zero, which is what that is, h of x is zero. If height is zero, which means it is the time where it hits the ground. So, what is the interpretation of x-intercept? The answer is, interpretation of x-intercept is that it tells us, it tells us the, the number of seconds it takes for the object to hit the ground. That is the interpretation of it. And let's see which one, which one says that here. The answer, the answer is, it's not the initial height, it's not the maximum height, it's not the time that it reaches maximum height. The answer is D, the time at which the projectile hits the ground. There you go. The answer is D. What we wrote down on the blackboard, what I wrote down on the blackboard is what you see in answer choice D, just worded differently. 27. It tells us the number of seconds it's going to, it's number of seconds it takes for the object to hit the ground. Right here, this is this is the time here in seconds, and this is the height as a func as a function of time. Whether you use letter T for to represent time or letter X doesn't really matter. Number, that was number 26. Let's look at 27. 27 says that the function f cuts x-axis at a0 and b0. And a and b are both positive. a and b are positive. Well, again, if this function cuts x-axis, that means the f of 
the value of the function at that point must be zero. The value of the function must be zero. This y, which is the value of the function, must be zero because it's cutting the x-axis. And, and, and we know that among the four answer choices that we have, as, we, as, as you look at the answer choices, they are all written number 27, let me find it, right there, is a product of two quantities. And we know that the only way it's going to cut x-axis at this point, a0 and b0, is if y is equal to x minus a times x minus b. Why? Because this quantity has to equal 0. This quantity has to equal 0 if it's going to cut x-axis. And it's going to be 0 when, when x is equal to a or x is equal to b. If x is equal to a, we're going to end up with a minus a. It doesn't matter what we have here. a minus a is 0, 0 times 0 is 0. And similarly, here we have some quantity for a. It doesn't matter what it is. Here we have b minus b. Again, it's going to equal to 0. So the form that we're looking for is this quantity has to equal 0, which means, which means x minus a has to equal to 0, or x minus b has to equal to 0, which means x is a or b, which is what that is. I think I explained too much, or maybe I didn't do a very good job, one or the other. Number 28. Number 28. See, in answer choice B, in answer choice B, we end up with this. I'm back to that one. In which case, X would have to be negative A. Negative A and positive A will give us... Uh, yes. The, it will have to cut at negative A zeros and negative B zero. That's not what we're told. told. We're told is B and zero and A and zero. In the next answer choice, we have one is... One, this one is fine, but that one is positive. It's not going to work. And the last one is the worst one, where it would work, except it has three intercepts, because it has x in front of it, which means it cuts the x axis. It cuts the x axis at when x is equal to zero, which is at the origin. If x is equal to zero, y is going to be zero. It cuts it at the origin. It doesn't cut at the origin. It only cuts the x axis only at two points. Number. 28. We are told that y is equal to 3x squared plus 6x plus 2. I'm not going to write the entire thing, I'm just going to read it to you. It says which characteristics of the graph represented by either its coefficient or the constant uh, is represented in the four answer choices. Which characteristics? is represented in the four answer choices, either by the coefficient or by the constant. And we have coordinates of vertex, we have x-intercept, we have y-intercept, and finally we have intercept of the line of symmetry. intercept of the line of symmetry. Well, if you look at it, which characters are represented by this equation, what they mean is that without doing any work, without doing any analysis, without putting any time, purely by visual, visual inspection. And the only thing that can be gotten from here, only thing that can be had from this equation, only thing that can be extracted from this equation, purely by visual, visual inspection, is this guy right here. You can see that when when x is equal to 0, when x is equal to 0, this drops out, this drops out, and y is equal to 2. When x is equal to 0, y is equal to 2, and that's your y-intercept. Because when x is equal to 0, x is equal to 0 along, along y-axis, along the y-axis, x is equal to 0. When x is equal to 0, it cuts the, it cuts the y-axis at some point, and that's what it tells us. It cuts it at 2. It goes through points, it goes through point zero two. And that's answer choice C.
it gives us the y-intercept there is nothing in the equation the way it is written that will help us find that will help us find the coordinates of the vertex by visual inspection we'll have to put some work into it to find it there is nothing in it that tells us the x-intercept x-intercept we're going to have to set this equal to zero uh, y equal to zero x-intercept and we have solved this quadratic equation we cannot just do it by visual inspection only thing that we can get just by looking at it is the y-intercept that was the end of that page I'm going to stop right here that was number number 28 that that is the end of the page we're going to stop right here we're going to, we're going to pick up from here the story tomorrow if you wish to get hold of me if you like if you would like to work with me if you would like to hire me as your tutor to help you get ready for the exam you can always get hold of me as I told you before as I've told you before many times by simply sending me an email at kashwaniprep at icloud.com all right bye now